Hey, hey, y'all, periods three and six. Sorry I couldn't be with you today. This is uh, Anna, who uh, actually turns um, 11 months old today. And unfortunately, she is sick. She's uh, got a little cold, and man, she's uh, just not real happy. So I had to stick with her today. Um, and uh, I'm sure you guys will be all right without me. Um, hopefully you've had time to uh, check out the answers from the, those basic skills, uh, the three basic skills that we were working on last night. Um, Mr. Moore assured me you guys had done all that stuff last last spring, but maybe you didn't remember all of it. Um, I'll be happy to go over any of those questions for you uh, when I hopefully am back tomorrow. I'm planning on being back tomorrow. So um, what we're going to do today is now that we've established all of these exact values going around the the unit circle, we're going to pretty much just apply symmetry and then the, um, you know, the X, Y relationships to this, to the trig functions to be able to get exact values anywhere we want as long as they are either, you know, 30 or 45 or 60 degree uh, reference angle rotation. So um, on page nine of your course pack, you should see uh, a fun little activity called the circle of fun part one. And um, we're going to do Circle of Fun Part 2, I think, uh, Friday. Um, kind of looks like this. And it just has this little table that looks similar to the one you did a couple nights ago, except this time sine, cosine, and tangent are horizontal. And the angles above um, are all running down the columns. And we're only going um, to 90. Why 90? Well, that gets us through Quadrant 1. Once we have Quadrant 1, we can apply symmetry anytime we want. So the main thing you're going to have to be able to do uh, is build this table. Um, let's, uh, let's first of all uh, make sure that we remember those radians from yesterday. We, uh, we're very familiar with degrees up to 90 or even further, I'm sure. But as far as the radians go, the main relationship that we want to keep in mind is dun, 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 this one right here. Let's see here. Halfway around a circle, one half rotation, which we have always known as 180 degrees, we now understand is exactly pi radians. If you can keep that in mind, you can very quickly generate these radian values. So, for example, uh, zero um, is just going to be zero radians. That's pretty straightforward. But 30, well, 30 degrees goes into 180 degrees six times. So what's one-sixth of pi? Well, that's pi over 6. Now, 45 degrees goes into 180 degrees four times. So that's one-fourth of that half rotation. Well, what's one-fourth of pi? Since pi is a half rotation, well, one-fourth of pi is pi over 4. And 60 goes into 183 times, so we get pi over 3. And finally, 90 goes into 180 exactly twice, so pi over 2. And um, those are your radian measures. That some people kind of get freaked out a little bit because the numbers seem to be getting smaller, 6, 4, 3, 2. But remember, they're fractions. One-sixth of something is smaller than one-fourth, which is smaller than one-third, which is smaller than one-half. So that's, that's exactly what it is. You guys will have these memorized so quick it won't even be funny. Now, the main thing about sine to remember is we learned that sine relates to the y variable. And so as we track through quadrant one here, what we're going to be really focusing on for, for uh, sine is those y values. And the first y value at zero degrees is a value of zero. That's because we have no height. This point has not moved up. Uh, it is uh, at, on the x-axis, it has a height of zero. Now at 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians, we suddenly pop up to a height of 1 half. At 45 degrees or pi over 4 radians, we now have popped up to a height of root 2 over 2. Uh, by the time we get to 60 degrees or pi over 3 radians, we're all the way up to root 3 over 2. And finally, um, at the top of the circle, we reach the maximum height that the unit circle ever achieves, which is its, its radius going straight up vertically, which is one. So those are your values. 
Um, you're going to have these pretty much ingrained in your memory within a couple days just because you use them so much. And here's what I can promise. I can promise you that if you know these five values, if you know the sign uh, line of the unit circle uh, table, you are going to be able to build the entire rest of the table. And we're only looking at half the table right now. We're only looking at the three primary functions that you're familiar with. Um, I, I think you probably remember there were actually three others called the reciprocal functions, cosecant, secant, and uh, cotangent. And we'll reintroduce ourselves to those coming up on Friday. Um, but if you know these sign values, you're in good shape. Uh, there's a little trick. Um, I call it stairway to heaven in, in, you know, in honor of Led Zeppelin. Um, but what you do is you just do this. You do this, you do this, you do this. I know this is really hard. It's square root over 2, square root over 2, square root over 2. Then you simply count, but not from 1. You count from 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I know this is crazy, but check it out. The square root of 0 is 0 divided by 2 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 is a perfect square, so you get 1 half. The square root of 2 cannot be simplified, so you get root 2 over 2. Uh, root 3 doesn't reduce either, okay? So we just get root 3 over 2. Root 4, though, yeah, 4 is a perfect square. So we get 2 over 2, which is 1. Look at that. There's your sine values right there. This is a cheater's way of getting it. You don't really even have to really understand what's going on or where these values are coming from, but it is a way to generate those values. And I, I'm telling you, once you have them, you're golden. You can build the rest of the table from it, and we'll we'll certainly get a lot more into that over the next uh, you know three or four days. Now, what about the cosine? Well, cosine relates to the x value because remember, if you have a a triangle with a in a unit circle, so its hypotenuse is one, and we know that this point has an x value and a y value. Well, cosine is adjacent adjacent over hypotenuse. So there you go. X over one is x. And uh, so we just need to look at the x values, and we're going to start with 1, and then jump up to root 3 over 2. Or actually, we're not jumping up. We're moving back now. See, we started here, and now we're back just a little bit here on the x-axis. And then root 2 over 2, which is now about back to here on the x-axis, and then 1 half, which is now all the way back, you know, halfway. And then finally, we end up all the way back at an x value of 0. Um, what about the tangent? Well, opposite over uh, adjacent there is going to be y over x. And um, three of these y over x's, or remember we, we said that because sine is y and cosine is x, tangent is sine over cosine, three of these values you're going to find very, very simple. Okay? Um, zero divided by one right here, 0 divided by 1 right here. Okay, that's easy, right? I mean, 0 divided by 1 is 0. Um, here's another easy one. Um, root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2. Well, anything divided by itself is, is 1. Okay, so we got a 0, we got a 1. Uh, and the other simple one really is here at the end. And here at the end we get... 1 divided by 0. It's not, I wouldn't say it's simple to understand, but we know that we can't divide by 0. And so what we end up with is an undefined value. Those are pretty quick. You can get those fairly quickly just by glancing. Now, these other two, remember, were a little bit of a pain because what we had to do is we had to do sine over cosine. Well, dividing fractions, we'd rather multiply by reciprocal. So we multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. We get 1 over root 3, which has to be rationalized. And when all is said and done, we end up with root 3 over 3 at pi over 6 radians. And then when you do root 3 over 2 over 1 half, when the 2 is canceled, the root 3 is in the numerator, so you just end up with root 3. And those are your values. So hopefully you got these all copied down on page 9. You probably, some of you guys, because we just did something similar to this a couple days ago, are like, oh, okay, can we move on? Yes, we can move on. We're going to move on right now. Um, page 10 is uh, called Exact Values and Circular Bliss. And so this is where we're just going to start doing our job 
when we evaluate uh, trigonometric expressions at um, special rotational angles, uh, we're just going to come up with an exact value. Um, for this activity, we are doing all of this stuff in here um, where we determine quadrants and coordinate variable relationships and, you know, is it positive or negative? What's the reference angle? All of this stuff is stuff you're going to be doing internally um, very soon. But for now, we're going to go ahead and walk through this stuff so we can figure out what we really want. Because in the end, this is all that matters. Okay, in the end, the, finding the exact value of these, the ratio, which is equal to the trigonometric value at that angle, well, that's all that matters. So um, I'm going to do a couple examples uh, for you and um, do them with me so that you have something to build on. And then from that point forward, I think, you know, you can just kind of finish this up um, for, the, uh, for the night's homework. So look, number one, the sine of 330 degrees. Let's check this out. We know that 330 degrees starting from the standard position is going to rotate almost a full rotation. It's going to come up 30 degrees short, 30 degrees short. That rotation right there is 330 degrees. So we're going to end in quadrant four. Okay. Why do we care that we end in quadrant four? Well, because based on what quadrant you're in, your ratio is either going to be positive or negative. Um, we need to know what coordinate variable matches up with our trig function. What matches up with sine? Y. Y does. What is Y in quadrant four? Well, Y is down in quadrant four. That makes it negative. That means my final answer here is going to be a, a negative value. Whatever the ratio is, it's going to have a negative value. Okay. Now, what about the reference angle? Remember, reference angle is always how far are you from the nearest x-axis? Well, this is only 30 degrees away. Our reference angle is 30. Now, why do we call it a reference angle? Because I can go to my table of values and say 30 degrees is my reference angle. Sine is my function. I know the ratio is going to be 1 half. And because... Um, I found it, that sine is negative in quadrant four. What's my answer? My answer is negative one half. So eventually, you're not going to do any of this stuff in here. You're just going to say negative one half is the answer. All right. This is just a little kind of baby step activity to get us thinking of all the factors you must consider in coming up with this. There's, there's a lot. I mean, you're talking about four things to come up with one answer. Uh, let's do another one. Tangent of 225 degrees. So uh, 225 degrees is going to rotate past 180, but not to 270. It's going to stop right at this 45 degree reference angle. Would you guys agree that this angle right here is 45 degrees back to the x-axis? So our, our reference angle is 45. Now check this out. Tangent, 45 degrees. <laughs> Ding, 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 boom. We're going to have a ratio of 1. We know the ratio is going to be 1. Okay. You know what we don't know? We don't know if it's positive or negative. Um, think about that. All you need is a reference angle to come up with uh, the ratio, the correct ratio. We need three things, quadrant, coordinate variable, and sine, to, to get the correct sign. I guess actually quadrant and coordinate variable give us the sign. So we need two things to come up with the sign. But regardless, the, the, getting the correct sign as far as positiveness or negativeness is more work than, uh, than just coming up with the, the ratio itself. But anyway, uh, we're in quadrant three. Boop, 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 boop. And what is tangent? Well, tangent is a combination of both variables. Tangent is y over x. So in quadrant three, we know that both x's and y's are negative, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So there's your final answer. The final answer is positive one. Okay? This is how it works. Now, uh, I'll do one more just because sometimes you end up not in a quadrant, but on an axis. And that's what happens with cosine of 270. Cosine of 270 is something where we were going to rotate right on to the y-axis. Um, Here's some things we do know. We know that when you're on an axis, there is no quadrant. So I, I just put a little NA for not applicable. We're not in a quadrant. 
I do know that cosine is, is an x um, function, matches up with x. And I do know that this isn't going to matter either. Uh, why? Let's think about this. Well, we're on the y-axis. We're on the y-axis. So that means we haven't moved to the left. We haven't moved to the right. And so the x's are not positive or negative. We're right at zero. Um, well, when you're at zero, that's the only place where you're not going to be positive or negative. Okay, so that that kind of takes care of that. Um, what about a reference angle? Well, technically, z zero and ninety are not reference angles. Zero degrees, ninety degrees, not reference angles. But it, there's no denying that this is a ninety degree rotation. So you could kind of say, look, cosine ninety is zero. But if you think about it, we've already talked about that, okay? So you could either put not applicable for a reference angle, or you could just put 90. I don't, either one's fine. We are referencing it, so it's fine. But uh, yeah, sure enough, it's zero. And we kind of figured that out before we even looked at the table. But um, there you go. So this is how you do the, the angle relationships. Um, notice that the first six are positive. The next five are negative. So just make sure you're rotating backwards. Um, listen to this statement, okay? That's an alert, okay? Please listen to this. This is very important, okay? Whether the angle is positive or negative has nothing to do with whether the ratio is positive or negative. There's no direct connection there, okay? Because an angle is negative does not mean your answer is going to be negative. The only thing that matters is what quadrant you stop in. And are your x's or y's positive in that quadrant? Because that's going to match up with the sines and the cosines, okay? Uh, so keep that in mind. But I'm sure you can do these. Now, um, the, the radians I know you're least familiar with. You haven't worked with these very much. And I know you're, a lot of people are going to have the, the urge to, to convert these into degrees and answer these using degrees. Well, if you do that, you will never get better at radians. And the radians are not going away, my friends. They're going to be with you all semester. They're going to be with you in uh, second semester when we do trig, fun trig function uh, stuff with uh, math analysis. They're going to be with you in calculus. Don't avoid them. Just get used to them. All right? That's, that's all I can really tell you. Now, there is a really nice trick to the radians. And here's the deal. All right? Um, think of the, the first one. We'll do number 12. Cosine of 2 pi over 3. So we know that pi over 3 is a, is a 60 degree reference angle, right? Pi over 3 is a 60 degree reference angle. Well, 2 pi over 3 would just be, you know, 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. Um, it's going to put us into quadrant 2. All right? We know that cosine matches up with x. And we know that x back in quadrant 2 is negative. So our final answer here is going to be negative. Here's the thing, though. Okay, check this out. The reference angle is how far down to the x-axis I go. Well, that's just another 60 degrees. That just, that's just another pi over 3 radians. So the reference angle is simply pi over 3. Now, this may not be a big deal to you yet. Wait until we do number 13, and we'll see if we find a pattern. Um, let's see here. Cosine, pi over 3, 1 half. And because the cosine is negative in quadrant two, our answer is negative one half. So let's take a look at the sine one, and then maybe we'll we'll try to see this little this little uh, trick that I'm leading you towards. Um, three pi over four. So pi over four is that quarter, uh, you know, the half quadrant rotation, 45 degrees. So one, two, three. Pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 would be this rotation right here. And that is, once again, in quadrant 2. Now, sine matches up with y, not x. And guess what? y is positive in quadrant 2. y is positive in quadrant 2. Um, what's the reference angle? All right, here's the, here's the payoff right here. We're at uh, 3 pi over 4 here, but the angle down to the x-axis is just pi over 4. It's just pi over 4. Are you seeing this connection? Are you seeing this really nice relationship? If the angle is 2 pi over 3, the reference angle is just pi over 3. If the reference angle is 3 pi over 4, the reference angle is just pi over 4. 
the angle gives away in radians the reference angle if if it's a reduced fraction. Okay. Now uh, let's finish this uh, answer here real quick. Um, sine pi over four. Two over two is your answer, and you're done with the problem. But as we look down at some of these other problems, uh, we know that you know this is a seven pi over six uh, angle rotation, so that's going to be a pi over six reference angle, uh, pi over two reference angle, so that'll be somewhere on the y-axis. Pi, well, that's on the x-axis, right? That's a half rotation, so that's going to be a zero degree reference angle, even though that doesn't technically count, but we'll be right on the x-axis. Nine pi over four. Well, that's over a full rotation, but guess what? The reference angle is just going to be pi over 4, okay? So there's a nice little trick with radians. They're not as bad as they seem, but you do have to be careful. There's a reason that we have some emergency vehicles hanging out with these dudes right here, okay? If you think of 8 pi over 6, and you just say, oh, the reference angle is going to be pi over 6, well, let's figure that out. Pi over 6 is, is just a 30-degree jump, right? So 1 pi over 6... 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. Okay, here's your 8 pi over 6 right here. There's 8 pi over 6. What's the reference angle? Well, guess what? It's not pi over 6. It's 2 pi over 6. It's, uh, what is that, pi over 3 when you reduce it? The, pi, the reference angle is pi over 3. Why is that an emergency vehicle there? He's trying to warn you that this is not a reduced um, angle, not in a reduced rotation. 8 pi over 6 really reduces to 4 pi over 3. So it, it actually does give you the right angle if you reduce the fraction first. Now usually you're going to be given reduced fractions, but you never know. So you always have to do that little check. All right? Always be careful with that. Um, by the way, um, 18, 19, 20, and, and then uh, looks like ambulance there are um, negative radians. So just make sure that you um, go backwards, you rotate clockwise. And that's it. So, um, you know, hopefully these examples help you out. Uh, if you're not sure how to do these or you don't remember, help each other. Um, page 10 is what I want you to work on uh, tonight. Make sure you finish that. But, you know, if, if you're getting this, there really is no reason why you can't jump into you know, page 11 and start the next assignment. Uh, it's the same exact thing, you know. What, what it's going to be, as we flash through all the answers here, that was kind of nice, right? What it's going to be is it's just going to be, hey, what is the sine of, oh, I don't know, 11 pi over 3. And so you're going to imagine your unit circle, and you're going to say, okay, um, that's 3 pi over 3 is pi, 6 pi over 3 is 2 pi, 9 pi over 3 is 3 pi, 10 pi over 3, 11 pi over 3. So we're going to be in quadrant 4. Well, in quadrant 4, y is negative. And so I know that this is, you know, sine matches up with y. So I know it's going to be a negative ratio. What is the um, ratio for a reference angle of pi over 3? Because this is what we have left here, right? Pi over 3 back up to the x-axis. Um, well, that's what the table's for. The sine of pi over 3, root 3 over 2, okay? The negative root 3 over 2 is your answer. See how we kind of put all the steps together in our thought process? But we're really just coming out with one final answer. Um, hope you guys uh, understood some of this. If not, I guess I'll see you in access tomorrow on Thursday. And, uh, you know, have a good... Uh, have a good Wednesday night. Uh, peace.